Earlier this year, the numbers 67 went viral because this kid set it into a camera at a high school basketball game. I like keeping up with the latest and greatest in viral numbers, but I only recently encountered this one due to a resurgence of the meme, turning the iconic 6-7 kid into an SCP horror creature. Scarier than the SCP-67 horror videos was this video of a kindergarten teacher counting with her class. I love that Mrs. James here is just rolling with the meme, but my god, a whole class of kindergartners is up to date on the latest TikTok brain rot? <sighs> you can feel Halloween in the air already. If the kindergartners know this meme, the middle schoolers must be absolutely terrorizing schools right now with 6-7. I was kind of hoping we could get a little bit further away from the previous favorite number of middle schoolers, but alas, Two will have to do. I'm not a math nerd, this is just my job, but I understand math nerds get very excited when a number gets popular for some reason. So if you've been consuming or producing 67 related content, I'm here as your hero. I've personally shouldered your burden of getting to know 67 a little bit more intimately. This is your formal introduction to 67 and what makes it such a special number. The first and most obvious fact putting 67 among Matt's eternal all-stars is that 67 is prime. This of course means that the only factors of 67 are 1 and 67 itself. In fact, if you write out a list of primes, you'll find that 67 is the 19th prime number on the list. And 19 itself is a prime number. This means that in fact, 67 isn't just prime, but super prime. That's because its position in the list of primes, namely 19, is itself a prime number. You probably don't think it can get much cooler than that, but check this out. If we take the four primes preceding 19 and 19 itself, let's add these numbers up and see what we get. Plus 13, plus 17, and plus 19. Look at that, it's 67. That is wild. 67 is the sum of five consecutive prime numbers. We've previously discussed how 2025 is a really cool year. It will be 2067 42 years from now, but if we go the other direction and rewind 67 years, we arrive in the year 1958 AD. Back then was right around the time the legendary Corn Popper toy was released. The year that the voice actor for Aaron Griffin from Gears of War 3 was born. And it was still three years before the first ever electronic desktop calculator would be released. And if you want to be immature, get 69 out of here. Because 67 is actually the middle of a sexy prime triplet. 67 is prime, and 67 minus 6 is 61, which is also prime, and 67 plus 6 is 73, which is prime as well. These are all called sexy primes because they're 6 away from another prime, but they are consecutive sexy primes, making them what mathematicians call a sexy prime triplet. Isn't that nice? While six up and six down both get us primes, the nearest possible primes would be two up and two down. But neither of these numbers turn out to be prime, making 67 what's called an isolated prime. How the turn tables. One minute you're the middle of a sexy prime triplet, and the next you're isolated. Seems like bad luck, but hold up. 67 isn't just prime and super prime, it's what we call a lucky prime. A lucky prime is, go figure, a lucky number that happens to be prime. The so-called lucky numbers are generated by a sieving process similar to the sieve of Eratosthenes. You start by writing out the numbers as far as you like, let's say all the way up to 100. Then one gets free admission as the first lucky number. The very next number is two. So what we do is beginning at one, 
eliminate every second number. So one, two, eliminate two, one, two, eliminate four, one, two, eliminate six, eliminate eight, eliminate eight, 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 four, eight, 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 The next surviving number, and hence the next lucky number, is three. Then, beginning at one, we eliminate every third surviving number. So, count one, two, three, five gets eliminated. One, two, three, eleven gets eliminated. And this is eight, one, two, nine, two, five, one, four, seven, the next surviving number, and hence the next lucky number, is 7. Again, beginning at 1, we'll eliminate every 7th surviving number. So count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 19 is eliminated. And the next lucky number then is 9, so we'll eliminate every 9th surviving number, again beginning at 1. So that means 27 gets eliminated, 57 gets eliminated, and 91 gets eliminated. So the next lucky number is 13, beginning at 1 we'll eliminate every 13th survivor. So goodbye 45, and goodbye 97. The next lucky number is 15, and this will cause us to eliminate 55. I also accidentally missed 85, which should have been eliminated earlier. Continuing this process will produce all of the lucky numbers, but it will not eliminate any more of the numbers in this list of 1 through 100. So every surviving number on this list is indeed a lucky number. Of course, most significant to us is that 67 is on this list. So we see indeed it's a lucky number, and it's a prime, hence it's a a lucky prime. Of course, when you look at these lucky numbers, you can see that some are prime, like 3, 7, and 67, whereas some are not prime, like 99 and 69. And it's actually not known if there are finitely many or infinitely many lucky prime numbers. But here's a type of prime where we can say if there are infinitely many or not. They're called Chen primes. A prime number P is called a Chen prime if P plus 2 is prime or semi-prime. A semi-prime is like a number that's almost prime. It's a number that has exactly two prime factors. For example, 4, which has the two prime factors 2 and 2. Or 39, which has the two prime factors 3 and 13. These numbers aren't prime, but they are semi-prime. So again, to determine if a prime number P is a Chen prime, you have to look at P plus 2. Of course, in the case of 67, that's 67 plus 2. 2, which is the infamous 69. 69 is itself not prime, but it is semi-prime because it is the product of exactly two prime factors, 3 and 23. Since 69 is semi-prime, we have that indeed 67 is a Chen prime. Chen primes, by the way, are named after Chinese mathematician Chen Jingrun. He proved what's known as Chen's theorem. And if you read through the theorem, you may recognize that it's a weakened form of Goldbach's conjecture. Goldbach's conjecture is one of the oldest and most famous unsolved problems of mathematics today. Back to 67, it isn't what we call a palindrome on account of the fact that 67 isn't the same as 76. But if we write 67 in base 5, we get 2, 3, 2, which is a palindrome. We could also write it in base 6. Sometimes this is called the scenery system, but that just makes me think of the word scenery, and I'd rather use a name that doesn't make me think of something totally unrelated. So in the seximal system, it is written 151, another palindrome. And 67 is the smallest number with this palindromic property in the two bases, 5 and 6. Are you filled with warmth, hope, and glee yet, my friends? People who always insist on using decimals make me sick. We could have 1 over 11, nice and simple, or we could have 0 0.09090909099 repeating. Yeah, bro, decimals are so much easier. 
then you have something like one over seven. Or if you're a decimal guy, you just use a much easier 0.142857 repeating. Well, let me tell you this, no decimal guy is going to be brave enough to defend his stupid position when he encounters one over 67, which is 0.0141253731343283582089552238059597 repeating a sequence of 33 digits. This is Subaya Sivasan Karana Rayana Palai. He is the namesake of the numbers he studied, called the Palai Primes. A prime number p is a Palai prime if there exists a positive integer n whose factorial is one less than a multiple of p, but also p is not one more than a multiple of n. So you can see that 67 is a Palai prime because 18 factorial is one less than 95 trillion 557 billion 816 million 503,403 times 67. And 67 is not one more than a multiple of 18. And of course, we can't finish without mentioning that 67 is, in its essence, part of one of the most well-worn math jokes of all time. Why was 6 afraid of 7? Because 7 was a registered 6 I'm on the table, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and untuck the table If Texas Instruments don't reply, well, I think this time it might be fatal I wish to sell my own fake cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull a prank, push it all the way through the whole blue planet Faded, psycho